Catching ship is SpaceX's next great milestone after the success of Flight 10. The question now is when will it happen? Musk has offered new details, giving us a clearer view of the path ahead and the preparations needed to make this bold plan a reality. What exactly did he reveal, and how is SpaceX preparing for this daring step? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It can be said, without exaggeration, that the journey of both Starship stages in Flight 10 was a remarkable success, especially when compared to the outcomes of previous flights. For the first time, both stages achieved controlled landings, and they did so while new and challenging tests were being conducted. This performance not only validated SpaceX's approach to iterative development, but also set the stage for what is perhaps the most ambitious goal yet, catching both stages with the Mechazilla arms to achieve true full reusability. This long-awaited milestone, recently highlighted in a vivid 3D animation released by SpaceX, has captured the attention and imagination of enthusiasts worldwide. The question that follows is straightforward. When exactly will SpaceX attempt this daring catch? Prior to Flight 10, there were already two possible scenarios being discussed. The first was that SpaceX might attempt a catch as early as Flight 11, which is planned to be the final V2 flight and could serve as a testbed before transitioning to V3. The second possibility was that the company would wait until Flight 13, the second V3 flight, giving them additional time to refine the technology and strategy. Musk himself has now provided the answer. On X, he stated, Starship catch is probably Flight 13 to 15 depending on how well V3 flights go. This revelation confirms one of those earlier predictions and shows that SpaceX is choosing a more cautious yet strategic approach. By delaying the catch attempt until the second V3 flight at the earliest, they are ensuring that the hardware and systems have been tested thoroughly enough to maximize the chances of success. Musk's statement also makes it clear that this could slip to Flight 14 or even 15, depending on the performance of the early V3 vehicles. Timing is another crucial factor. Musk explained that SpaceX is currently aiming for a launch cadence of roughly one flight every two months. If that schedule holds, Flight 11 would likely occur in October, 12 in December, and then 13, 14, and 15 could fall around February, April, and June of next year, respectively. However, there is reason to believe the pace could accelerate. The hardware for Flight 11 is already showing promising progress. And with successful results, SpaceX could very well move faster, bringing the catch attempt forward by several weeks or even months. Choosing to avoid a catch during Flight 11 and Flight 12 makes sense from both a technical and a safety perspective. Flight 11 would serve as the last V2 test, focused on perfecting existing systems without introducing major changes. Flight 12, the debut of the V3 design, will already involve numerous upgrades and innovations. Attempting to catch during such a transitional flight would add unnecessary risk. By waiting until 13 or or later, SpaceX will have the benefit of lessons learned and the opportunity to confirm reliability before attempting such a critical step. This cautious schedule also aligns neatly with SpaceX's broader timeline for Starship development. If the first successful catch occurs in early 2026, the middle of that year could then mark the beginning of work on orbital refilling demonstrations, a cornerstone capability for interplanetary missions. By the end of 2026, SpaceX aims to be ready for both the HLS uncrewed lunar landing demonstration and the first uncrewed mission to Mars. Catching both stages successfully is not just a symbolic milestone but a vital enabler for this sequence of ambitious missions. In the meantime, the upcoming two flights will still play a crucial role in preparing for this milestone. Both stages will once again attempt controlled landings into the ocean. For Super Heavy, this will mean continuing to refine maneuvers such as the active flip, experimenting with steeper landing angles, and testing landings at reduced engine power to create redundancy for future missions. For Ship, these flights will involve extensive testing of the heat shield, including experiments with different tile configurations, metallic tiles, and advanced cooling systems. It's also possible that these flights will see Starship reach full orbit, potentially carrying larger payloads or even real payloads to space as part of the testing process. Each
Each of these tests will build confidence in the navigation, deceleration, and stabilization systems that are critical for returning ship to the launch site and into the waiting arms of Mechazilla. The successful demonstration of these systems will be the foundation for attempting the catch, which represents one of the boldest leaps in the history of rocketry. So the path forward is clear. Flight 11 and 12 will set the stage by validating upgrades and proving reliability. From Flight 13 onward, the true test of catching Starship begins. Whether it happens on Flight 13, 13, 14, or 15, this attempt will be a defining moment for SpaceX, marking the transition from reusability to full rapid reusability. Do you think the timeline set by Musk and SpaceX is realistic? Please share your thoughts in the comments by responding with yes or no, along with your opinion. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel so that you can continue following SpaceX's incredible journey toward making the impossible possible. Of course, SpaceX must prepare carefully if it wants to keep pace with the ambitious schedule that lies ahead. Much of this preparation will involve both the vehicles themselves and the ground infrastructure that supports them. Each element must be tested, refined, and verified in order to make catching both Starship and Super Heavy with the Mechazilla arms not only possible, but reliable. Starting with the vehicles, the ship will need to receive its catching point system. This is the hardware that will connect with the Mechazilla arms, that will connect with the Mechazilla arms during the landing attempt. The current plan is to install and test the older design during Flight 11, followed by the upgraded design on Flight 12. These early flights will be crucial to prove that the catching points can survive the stresses of launch, re-entry, and splashdown. Only once they are validated will SpaceX commit to using them in an actual catch attempt. A similar approach will be taken with Super Heavy. The V3 upgrade for the booster is expected to include catching points integrated directly with the grid fins, marking a clear step forward in the design. The return journey of both stages will depend heavily on their engines. For Flight 11, SpaceX will still use the existing Raptor 2 engines, but the real focus will be on Flight 12, which will debut the long-awaited Raptor 3. This new version is designed to be more powerful, more reliable, and less complex than its predecessor. Before it flies, however, it'll need to prove itself during a series of static fire tests. These tests will not only confirm its thrust output, but also demonstrate its precision and reliability, both of which are essential for accurate navigation and controlled landings. In addition to the engines, the navigation and landing systems must perform flawlessly. For Super Heavy, this includes the grid fins, which provides steering during descent, while for the ship, the flaps play the same critical role. These aerodynamic services will need to work seamlessly with the Mikazilla arms to guide the vehicles into position for a safe catch. While ship's design has not changed much in this area compared to V2, the aft flaps remain a point of concern since they have often suffered damage during re-entry. Strengthening them will likely be one of the next priorities. Other systems on ship also demand attention. These include the payload bay, the fuel tanks and heat shield, and the composite overwrapped pressure vessels. Although these components performed well during Flight 10, they will need to be reinforced and carefully monitored to avoid the kinds of failures that plagued earlier flights. Alongside the vehicle upgrades, SpaceX must also prepare the ground systems, which will play an equally critical role. In order to catch ship, two launch towers must be operational. That means Pad 2 at Starbase needs to come online soon. In fact, it could already be operational as early as the first V3 flight later this year. Even before an official catch attempt is made, Pad 2 is currently in the final stages of assembly and has already begun testing. Its design will include significant improvements compared to Pad 1 with upgraded chopsticks, a new orbital launch mount, and a redesigned flame trench. While Pad 1 may continue to serve as the main operational pad, Pad 2 is expected to handle much of the heavy workload in the near future, including supporting future dual-stage catch operations. Beyond the launch towers, SpaceX is also expanding its production and testing capabilities. The Star Factory, which is now ramping toward full capacity, will accelerate the construction of new vehicles, especially the V3 variants. Recent photos have revealed a growing number of nose cones and ring sections inside the factory, showing just how quickly production is scaling up. Nearby, larger assembly bays are also under construction, with the new Gigabay currently in the foundation stage. Once completed, this massive facility will allow SpaceX to assemble multiple boosters and ships simultaneously, dramatically increasing output. 
Testing infrastructure is another vital piece of the puzzle. The Massey test site will soon return to support static fire testing of both ship and super heavy prototypes. A recent milestone at this facility was the completion of cryogenic testing for the Booster QD, a key component for fueling operations. Having Massey fully active again will relieve pressure on Pad 1 and ensure that testing can continue in parallel with launch preparations. This ability to test, refine, and launch without delays will be critical to maintaining SpaceX's aggressive schedule. When taken together, these preparations paint a clear picture of how SpaceX is positioning itself for the next stage of Starship development. By building out a robust production system, completing powerful new assembly facilities, expanding its testing infrastructure, and upgrading both ship and Super Heavy, SpaceX is laying the groundwork for reliable catches with the Mechazilla arms. If everything proceeds as planned, the result will be a constant flow of V3 prototypes, tested thoroughly and flown rapidly. That pace will provide SpaceX with the data and confidence it needs to attempt one of the boldest engineering feats in history, catching the largest rocket ever built, not once, but twice twice to achieve true full reusability. There is certainly a lot to look forward to in the new version of Starship, but before SpaceX can get there, the company must first overcome the immediate challenge of Flight 11. The next Starship launch is expected in September or October, and a September flight would mark the first time SpaceX has launched Starship in back-to-back -back months, setting a new record and accelerating future missions. Hardware for Flight 11, Ship 38, and Booster 17 has already passed cryogenic tests, and now awaits pad refurbishment, booster trials, and Ship 38's static fire before final preparations. With Flight 10 free of major failures, no lengthy investigation is required, allowing approvals and reviews to proceed quickly. While Flight 11 will not attempt a catch, it'll push Starship closer to its limits, improving reliability and gathering critical data ahead of the V3 series. Musk's timeline points to late this year and early next as the window for the first true catch attempt, when both stages return to the launch site for full reusability. The stage is nearly set. The question is, are you ready for it? This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.